Ford 50 2023. Tonight, we're on our Friday night Making Babies series. Tonight, the dandelion. How the dandelions make babies. How can anybody with a one functioning brain cell believe in evolution? You guys, you haven't answered any of my questions. We'll get to that in a minute. We're on Rumble, uh, under Kent Hovind Official is the name of the channel there. And on Genesis Baptist Church on YouTube and also Doc Dino on YouTube. And Odyssey, Kent Hovind Official, they're all listed on drdino.com. Okay, tonight, my anniversary. That's true, but I was going to put in there dandelions. Okay, let's see. Coming to you live from Genesis Baptist Church. Uh, see, we need someone to maintain our 40 flower boxes and keep the place looking pretty. One of you old codgers want to come down here and say, I'll, I'll live there for free if uh, you feed me. Well, we will. I'll give you an apartment to live in and put you to work. We've got lots of landscaping to do. You need a mechanic to come help for a few weeks, nothing, probably a few months, right? Get caught up on everything. Okay, somebody coming from New York who can haul a small farm tractor down. If you're coming from this way, got a trailer, we'll pay you. Bring the tractor down, okay? Here we are, Lenox, Alabama, straight north in Dinosaur Adventureland. Big L-shaped property right there. Cabin 25. The guy's coming in in about 40 minutes to stay in cabin 25. He said he knows where it is, down by the lake. If you see him, he'll be here in about an hour, okay? Let's see. Uh, let's see. There's our church building. That's our old oh, man. We have deepened the lakes for fishing holes. You won't believe when you come down here. It's going to be cool. 16 lakes on the property. I don't want to show all that. Let's see. Solomon said, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. You can learn a lot from an ant. You can learn a lot from every kind of animal in the Bible, every kind of plant. Consider the lilies, Jesus said. So, a bunch of different kinds of lilies, 2,000 different kinds of lilies. You should consider them. They teach a great lesson. We're going to consider a different creature, a different plant tonight called the dandelion. <clears throat> consider the ravens. <clears throat> oh, I got a cough button. Hang on. Let me practice here. Did you hear it? Okay. Consider the ravens. There's a lot to learn. Why would, if anyone would stop and really consider anything that lives and makes babies, they would quickly realize how amazing God is and how stupid evolution is. All you got to do is stop and really think about it. Do you really believe that happened by chance? None of the living creatures on earth, creatures or plants, could have evolved in billions or trillions of years. It just doesn't happen. We've talked about quite a few different animals here. Let's get up to the, oh, the watermelon. The Bible says they always bring forth after their kind. That's all anybody's ever seen. So if you want to help us to open for free, join our 777 Club. I like what they're doing. I'm going to give a dollar a day. Can you spare a dollar a day? We're, we don't charge for anything. We have visitors come all the time, give tours. Costs us a fortune to run the place. But if you want to help, if not, we're going to go do it anyway. Okay, we'll Go to drdino.com. Click the yellow donate button. Okay, any checks to CSE? Oh, you got the black thing, white spots up there, huh? Yes, cool, okay. Uh, get our seminar series. Get my Woe series on what on earth is about to happen. You can order that uh, right on our YouTube channel or on our uh, website, Dr. Dino, or call 855-BIG-DINO, extension 1. My wife will answer and say, Creation Science, how may I assist you? I would just say, yeah, what do you want? Okay, but uh, <clears throat> she's real polite. Okay. God said he blessed them and said, he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. All through the Bible, you see where it's a blessing to be fruitful and multiply. God created all the creatures and gave them the ability to be fruitful and multiply. He made them male and female. It's the only two there are, by the way. Okay, Male and female, male and female. The Bible could not be more clear. He said, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So Jesus said, this is the beginning of the creation. There's no millions of years, no evolution. When God made Adam and Eve, that was the beginning. So you can add up the dates in the Bible, like I did on my chart here. Adam was 130 when his son was born. You add up the dates found in Genesis 5, and you can make a chart like this or buy one of mine. Heavy lamination for placemats when your skeptic friends come for lunch. The Bible dates up to about 6,000 years, 4,000 B.C. Okay, he said he gave the command for all life forms to make babies, and he gave the equipment and the drive to do so. It's all from God, okay? He gave an amazing variety of ways for them to do it that are all inexplicable by the evolution theory. They cannot explain their stupid theory of evolution. They'll have no excuse on Judgment Day. So I think God made so many varieties of making baby, ways of making babies, plants and animals, that nobody will have an excuse on Judgment Day, especially those of you watching my channel looking for any flaws that I make. God's going to say, did you listen 
God made everything. And you're calling God a liar with your stupid evolution religion. Okay, we'll get into that later. David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Hmm. So we talked about the anglerfish. Nobody answered that one. The tardigrade, nobody answered that one. The honeybee, nobody answered. Watermelon, starfish. What are you guys doing? You're not answering my questions. You say you got science on your side. Let's see it. Answer, answer it with a scientific answer. How did this evolve the ability to reproduce? I go through and explain how they reproduce, and I ask you some simple questions. How did this evolve step by step? It's a pretty complex process for all of them, any of them. How did this evolve? Nobody answered. Nobody answered that one, number 15, let's see, number 16, number 17, 18, 19, 20. You guys, you're way behind, way behind. Come on now, cry baby. Oh, by the way, cry baby, thank you for the good uh, editing he did on that picture. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. You keep studying. You're going to be an independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist, too. Okay? Let's see. Nobody answered about the tarantula, about the Suriname toad, about the platypus. Nobody answered about the kangaroo. Number 30, the bacteria, the Komodo dragon. Why aren't you guys answering? Hippopotamus, condor. I'm giving you plenty of targets to shoot at. The chicklid, cichlid, the sea slug. Nobody answered that one. Simple reason why none of you ev science denying evolutionists can answer any of these questions about how any of these plants or animals evolved, the ability to make babies the way they do, is because they didn't evolve. None of them did. They were all created, designed, purposely to make you stop and think about your dumb religion. And evolution is nothing. Maybe dumb is too kind of a word. It's stupid. Come on, give some answers. They say, but wait, if my evolution religion isn't true and God designed all the plants and animals, that changes everything. Oh, yeah, it does, honey. Changes everything. If there's a God, you better find out who he is, find out what he wants, and do what he says, because he's the boss. And he makes the rules, and he's going to judge you one day. We talked about the kiwi. Nobody answered that one. And the tortoise beetle last week. Come on, guys, you're way behind. Way behind. Now, tonight, the dandelion. And I predict nobody will answer this one either. You guys have a lousy track record. Okay. God said, let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind and creeping thing, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth on the earth, and it was so. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God made the firmament in the midst of the waters. And God said, let the waters bring be gathered together. All through the Bible, all God did was speak, and everything happened. He just spoke the world into existence. Didn't, have to, didn't lay a finger down. We're going to talk tonight about the dandelion. Scientific name, Taraxacum, is a large genus of flowering plants in the family with a Greek or a Latin name, okay, which consists of species commonly known as dandelions. The scientific and hobby study of genus is known as Taraxacology. Ology means the study of, okay? There are more than 250 species in Britain and Ireland, less than, no less than 40 types of dandelion found around the globe. I think that should be a 400. While encyclopedia.com reports that there are about 100 species of dandelion. Hmm, who would have thunk it? Quite a few different varieties of dandelion. And none of them evolved. How did the dandelion get its name? Well, the English name comes from the French word dent de lion, dent like a dentist, teeth, teeth of a lion. It's named after the lion's tooth. It's same thing in other languages, let's see, Spanish, diente de lion, Portuguese, Dente de Leon, Dion. Okay, so in modern French, the plant is named pissenlit, which means urinate in bed. Apparently referring to its diuretic properties, it'll make you pee the bed. Uh, so don't eat them late at night. I, I don't know. It just Never mind. Okay. Teeth of a lion. They say the leaf looks like the teeth of a lion. I, close enough for me. I, we're not going to change the name now. Don't even try. It's called dandelion. Okay. Common dandelion produces a single seed head that bears 40 to 100 or more seeds. However, each plant produces as many as 5,000 seeds in a single year. One dandelion can produce 5,000 seeds a year. Huh. Dand let's see. Dandelion head can contain anywhere from 54 to 120 seeds, depending on the size and height health. A single plant can produce 2,000 individual seeds, each capable of becoming a plant itself. Each seed uh, is released from the seed ball with a tiny individual parachute. They'll carry it with the wind. 
ensuring that dandelion is spread as far as possible. A lot of, it, like the oak tree, just relies on gravity or squirrels to carry it around. This thing sends its seeds off sometimes long ways. Flower head can produce up to 400 seeds, but the average is 180. Okay. Your ancestor, the dandelion. Somebody asked the question, uh, are, are we related to dandelions? Dandelion is one of your ancestors who lived in the Middle East 20,000 years ago, maybe 30,000. The counting generations, 80 to 120 generations. <sighs> related to a dandelion. Uh, boys and girls, to get an accredited degree from our prestigious university, students are not allowed to even think this flower had a designer. You can't even think that. Certainly don't say it in class. The teacher will flunk you, okay? They must believe it happened by chance evolution for no reason, or they will not be given, they will not be given a degree, period. That simple. There's a box. See, evolution is a fact. Do not think or look outside the box. So if some of you guys are locked inside that box, evolution is a fact. Do not go beyond this wall. Don't go past this wall. Evolution's a fact. Do any of you evolutionists ever wish you were allowed to think outside the box? Huh? It's a really big world outside your box. Come and see. The mindful evolution of the dandelion. Whole videotape on how they evolved. The plant that conquered the world. Boy, they're taking over, all right. Instead of getting a research grant to study how dandelions evolved, why don't get a grant to get why don't you get a grant to study if they evolved? Huh? And write a paper or peer for a peer-reviewed journal showing that there is no scientific evidence for it evolving. Would they publish that? Of course they wouldn't, and you know that. Peer-reviewed, this is a bunch of malarkey. It means a bunch of other people. I bet the peer-reviewed journals in Nazi Germany only allowed Nazi praising things to be published, didn't they? Yeah, okay, peer-reviewed. Think outside the box. Now be honest. You and I both know it would never be published because no one gets published if they think outside this box. You have to stay in their evolution box. Any suggestions that go against evolution or hint that there might be a creator are shot down in seconds. Keep your head down. Get back in the box. Right? Dandelions typically have 24 or 40 pairs of chromosomes. Some have 16 or 32. The most abundant dandelion species in the world has 16. A whole lot of chromosomes. There is no possibility that one chromosome happened by chance. None. Didn't happen. Think outside the box. Maybe somebody really smart made the dandelion chromosome to carry the code to tell this thing to do what it does. How long is DNA? The DNA inside each of your cells is longer than you are. The DNA in one cell tied together would be six feet long. Huh but packs down into a space smaller than you can see. The most abundant dandelion species in the world has 16 chromosomes. Remember, some have a lot more. 16 times six feet is 96 feet. 2,000 seeds a year, that's 192,000 feet or 36 miles of DNA in one dandelion. And that DNA code is beyond explanation of how complicated it is. Each little dandelion flower, 36 miles of DNA. Guys, do you really think that happened by chance? Come on now. Let's see. Oh, let me get to this one right here. Here is, if I got it right, a dandelion. All happened over millions of years by chance. Nobody designed it. I wish you atheists would just stop and think. Get outside that stupid little box somebody locked you in. You really think nobody made this? Really? Does that flower know that it's copying this 36 miles of DNA code? Does it even know it's doing that? Thank you.
Don't you wish you could just praise God when you look at a dandelion? I can. You join me. Get, rid of, get out of your little box and say, man, God, you're smart, God. I mean, like really smart. All happened by chance. Nobody made it. Okay, let's see. The dandelion. It has each of those little yellow things as an individual flower. And if they don't get pollinated right, they will split in half and curl up so that the pollen can stick to the inside of the curly part. Those little tiny specks on there are pollen grains. Ah. It's all happened by chance. Nobody made this. There's one guy in England, I just found it today. He takes super close up pictures of seeds of different things. Let's see, what's the name of it? Uh, K E I R E N. It gives a website in a minute. These are seeds. This is the seed of moss rose with a stereo microscope. There's the seed of a flowering vine. Uh huh. That's the seed of a wild carrot. Nobody made these seeds, did they? And these seeds contain the chromosomes, which is even more complicated. Let's see, a snapdragon seed. There it is robkessler.co.uk. Look at that website. It'll blow your mind. Just close-ups of seeds. Anybody want to guess what the world's biggest seed looks like and how big it is? That's a seed. The largest known seed in the world. Coco de mer plant. Palm. Okay. The seed is found within an even heavier nut. The seed itself weighs 40 pounds. The largest fruit can weigh 80 pounds. Wow. Dandelion seeds. Now, they get pollinated by the bees or other things. God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed. Mm. And the fruit tree after his kind, whose seed was in itself. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed. That would be dandelions. The evening and the morning were the third day. So the grass, the plants, and the trees were made on day three. Now follow the logic here. Okay, grass, plants, trees made on day three. Could Bible couldn't be more clear. All right, day four. God said, let there be lights in the firmament. And he made the lights of the firm to give light upon the earth. Two greater lights, the greater light to rule the day, that would be the sun. The lesser light to rule the night, that would be the moon. He made the stars also to rule over the day. And this was on the fourth day. So wait, wait, wait. He made the plants on day three. He made the sun on day four. Is that... Pretty clear? Yeah. Okay. Then he said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So he made the moving creatures and the birds. Mm. And he blessed them and said, have a bunch of kids. So he made the bugs, I believe, the insects and the birds on day five. Is this clear? There are some people who try to teach the days of creation might be long periods of time called the day age theory, like the living Bible. Let the earth burst forth with every sort of grass and seed bearing plant and fruit trees. This occurred on the third day and they've got a footnote at the bottom, literally a period of time. This was the third time period, not a day. It's right there, living Bible, read it for yourself, okay? Thousand years is yesterday and yesterday is like a thousand years. They, this is their uh, excuse for saying the days might be a thousand years or, or a long time. One day with the Lord's as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. Okay, This day-age theory was introduced in 1820 by an English Anglican theologian named George Faber. Here's the Holy Bible in Modern English by Farrar Fenton, 1903. By periods, God created that which produced the solar systems. Does that sound like Genesis 1-1? Then that which produced the earth. This was the close in the dawn of the first age. The Farrar Fenton Bible right there on the shelf. Okay, hold it. The close in the dawn of the second age. Are these actually ages? Let's see, God said, let the earth birth forth, bring forth grass, herbs, fruit trees on the third day, and the lights were made on the fourth day. How long is your trees and plants going to live with no sun? 
grass, plants, trees made on day three, sun on day four, bugs and birds on day five, and they pollinate the plants. This day-age theory is stupid, okay? The people that are preaching that and teaching that, stop, stop. Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Matthew 19, 4, Mark 10, 6, you're calling him a liar. God wrote on a rock with his finger the Ten Commandments where he said in six days, the Lord made heaven, earth, sea, everything in them. You're calling him a liar. This one uh, professor, James Barr at Vanderbilt, said, <clears throat> there's no professor of Hebrew at any Old Testament university, of Old, of Old Testament at any world-class university, who does not believe they intended to convey to convey that the same as the 24 hours we now experience. Or to put it negatively, the days of creation to be long eras of time. Nobody who understands Hebrew believes that, or shouldn't. And these ideas are not taken seriously by such professors. The Hebrew word for day is yam. It's used 1,541 times in the King James. 1,539 times, it obviously means a normal day. One time, it means 12 hours. Are there not 12 hours in the day? There's one time, it might mean a longer time. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth. That's the only time you might say, it's talking about it back in my day, so it could be a, a time period, but 1,542 times, or 1,540 times, it's a, it's a day, okay? He was three days without sight. In three days, I will raise it up. That's three days. There are no verses in the Bible where Yom means anything other than a 24-hour day if it's modified with a number, like second day, third day, fourth day. Now it's airtight, okay? But they're saying flowering plants evolved from the common ancestor of all living gymnosperms 300 million years ago. Ooh, that's a long time. New study challenges the idea of bee evolution. The honeybee evolved, let's see, bee species 120 million years ago. Wait, wait, wait. So the, the flowers went for, let's see, 180 million years with nothing to pollinate them? The bees didn't anyway. Uh, honeybees evolved 80 to 150 million years ago. Okay. Let's see, the bees evolved from a wasp. Oh, that's brilliant thinking. Do you have any science for that or just a statement, a fairy tale statement, okay? Fossil evidence is sparse, but bees probably appeared on the planet same time as flowering plants, 146 to 74 million years ago. Wait, wait, wait. But the flowering plants came 300 million years ago. Okay. Anyway, you can buy dandelion seeds and plant them. And when I was a kid, we got paid to pull them out. Get rid of them, okay? Look at that. That is a dandelion with half the seeds blown off. That little brown thing contains all the information to grow a dandelion. You really think nobody made this? Nobody. Each one has its own little parachute. The wind can blow them for miles and miles and miles. Look at that little fuzzy thing on top. You atheists, would you please explain how that evolved? I mean, it looks, you know, symmetrical. Almost looks designed, doesn't it? If you didn't know better. Dandelion seeds can travel up to 60 miles on the wind. Huh. A detached vortex that appears to propel and stabilize locomotion. The seed floats through the air using a bundle of bristles atop a stalk called a pappus, which prolongs the descent by dragging on the air like a parachute, ensuring that horizontal winds can help carry the seeds further. National Library of Medicine. The species-rich and widespread genus Taxicum, that's the dandelions, is one of the most taxonomically complete plant genera in the world. Hmm. Mainly due to its combination of different sexual and asexual reproduction. The dandelion can produce either way. It can produce by swapping DNA with another dandelion, with a bee or somebody pollinating it, a bug, or it can just make its own, a clone. Huh. Chromosome numbers are reported for the first time for 26 species. Okay, here we go. Has ability to produce sexually or asexually. The Darwin Report, let me guess, this is going to be non-biased, isn't it? Non-biased Darwin Report. Dandelion sex or lack thereof. Hmm, how do they make babies? There's the article. I just finished reading Frogs, Flies, and Dandelions, The Making of Species by Biologist. Let's see. Here's a little taste of what I learned. It illustrates that genetics isn't perfect and evolution is beautifully adaptive. 
you got to give credit to your God, don't you? Evolution is their God. Okay. Uh, let's see. Historically, the dandelion, that ubiquitous and irritating weed found in gardens and fields throughout North America and Europe, has been a puzzle to botanists. For a long time, no one was sure how many species existed. Carolus Linnaeus uh, said there's only one. Another guy said there's 2,000. But with DNA testing came the answer. Many dandelions are, in fact, clones. Hmm. They reproduced asexually, just made an exact copy of themselves. How did they evolve the ability to do that? Let's see. Some dandelions reproduce by parthenogenesis or virgin birth. They don't cross-pollinate. Huh. Instead, they produce unfertilized but still viable seeds, each with a triple set of chromosomes. In other words, a clone. So there are several strains with triple chromosomes, all sexually isolated from one another because they can only reproduce by cloning themselves. It gets better. The clones still produce pollen, except it's sterile. Hmm. Only the light of evolution, in the light of evolution, in this sordid asexual tale makes sense. Why waste the time and energy producing irregular pollen if it's never going to be used? Okay, Darwin, uh, uh, praiser here. Uh, uh, let me give you a logical reason, okay? He said in the article here, maybe God takes a sadistic pleasure in irritating people's allergies. Oh, that's why they make seeds that can't reproduce or pollen. There's another logical answer. Let's see. What eats dandelions? You know, if, just because the seed can't reproduce, it still might be a food source. You, th you ever think about that? Are you allowed to think outside the box? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's see. Insects eat these seeds. Okay. Many types of bee and wasp, including the honeybee, bumblebee, uh, bald-faced hornet, use dandelions as a food, a food source. Other insects that eat dandelions, grasshoppers, mites, fireflies, butterflies. If you have dandelions in your yard, it's not uncommon to see rabbits feasting on them. Dandelions are an integral part of the diet of many breeds of rabbits. Oh, mice eat them. See, it could be these seeds don't have to be fertile to produce another dandelion. They just are food because the critters are going to eat them. I know you guys don't even think that way. You can't think outside your little box, okay? Let's see. Seeds are eaten by many species of bird. Hmm, okay. Birds such as the goldfinch and the bobwhite, turkey, in other words, make dandelion seeds a regular part of their diets. <sighs> Who'd have thunk it? Let's see. Humans can eat them. Yeah, and it's good for you, actually. Okay. Britannica. Track the life cycle of a dandelion flower. Well, let's do that. Let's watch this. Is it here? No, that one needs to be shut down. Go over here. Close that one. And go to this one. Does that say Britannica at the top? Eh, we'll watch that one. It doesn't matter. I got three little short videos to play here. Dandelion flowers, seed head blowing away. All happened by chance. Nobody made, keep in mind, nobody made this. Never forget my dad telling me his buddies when he was a teenager. They said, hey, Bob, let's have competition. Who can blow these seeds the farthest? So they all got a dandelion. My dad went <gasps> right, right into the lungs. <coughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. This is the one I want, I think. Yeah. Okay. We'll just watch a little bit of it here. Okay. Dandelion plants normally produce their seeds by using pollen derived from other dandelion plants. This process is known as cross-pollination. The head of the dandelion is actually made up of many tiny flowers, tightly packed together. All happened by chance. Such flowers are known as composites. In the sunlight, the outer flowers on the dandelion head begin to open and tiny pistils emerge from among the anthers. 
As they move past the anthers, the pistils collect pollen and lift it up to be carried away to other plants. Later, the stigmas at the top of the pistils separate. Now their inner surfaces can receive pollen from another dandelion plant. So then the bees or bugs or wind are going to blow this pollen around and cross pollinate them. But in case that doesn't work, they can make a baby without a daddy. Some of the stigmas may not receive pollen from another plant. The next morning, these stigmas begin to curl around. As they do so, they pick up the pollen collected on their own styles. For the dandelion, self-pollination is a last resort if cross-pollination does not take place. Once pollinated, the dandelion, with its hundred or more flowers, closes to develop new seeds. How, who taught it to do that? Oh, I'm sorry, nobody. It just happened. Yeah. See, for millions of years, they didn't know how to pollinate them, and they all died. For, long time, for millions of years, all the dandelions died. None of them survived. So finally, one of them said, you know, we got to figure out a way to get pollen. Yeah. When the dandelion reopens, its head contains hundreds of tiny feathery parachutes. Each one is attached to a single seed. The parachutes help the wind carry the seeds away to places where they can grow. I, I guess I don't have words to describe uh -oh. how dumb the evolution religion is. I'm trying to be nice, just simply call it dumb. Maybe, maybe a better word for it, let's see. No, making babies, oh, right here, okay. Go back over here. I'm getting better at this, Joseph. I'll figure it out by the time I die, okay? A single dandelion plant has 36 miles of complex DNA code that all came from a single seed. And they, that's for 2,000 uh, seeds each time, but they can produce 5,000 seeds in a year. They can produce 90 miles of code every year. Huh. Does anyone with one functioning brain cell really believe this is a result of evolution? Guys, think. The root knows how to seek gravity, called uh, geophilic. The branches are uh, uh, trophic. They grow away from gravity. Just the gravity tells the branch which way to grow and the stem. The same thing with water. Hydro, meaning water. The root is hydrophilic. Philic means love. It loves water, so it grows toward the water. If you plant a dandelion plant or any plant and water it all on one side, the roots will grow that way. How does the root know? Does the root have a brain? <sighs> anyway, 13 emerging health benefits from dandelion. The leaves, the roots, the flowers can offer health benefits. They're highly nutritious, contains potential antioxidants, might flight inflammation. They have to use the word may because that would get them for medical malpractice. They may aid in blood sugar management. They may reduce cholesterol. They may reduce lower blood pressure, promote liver health, aid in weight loss, and anti-cancer effects, healthy digestion and treat constipation, boost your immune system, useful skin care treatment, might support healthy bones, dandelion nutrition. There's people who make salads out of them. Let's see, you can buy organic roasted dandelion root tea bags from Walmart. So be brave. Come out of the stupid box and look around. There's a designer. It's all clear. Come out of that silly box and look around at God's amazing creation. If you evolution believers want everyone to be required to believe, your religion of the burden of proof is on you to give scientific proof for each step or of your story that dandelions evolved from bacteria. Let's see, don't you teach there was a single-celled creature like a bacteria, and it slowly, slowly, over millions of years, turned into a dandelion? That's the chart you put in our textbooks. That same single-celled creature slowly evolved to humans. Don't you? You believe that, don't you? Where's the science? That's all I'm asking for. Where's the evidence? You believe it. It's nothing but a religion. Keep your stupid religion out of our public schools, please. Teach evolution at a, at a private school where kids want to pay and come learn it. But don't make everybody pay to teach your religion. That's all you're doing. Okay. Gooby wrote, Kent, are you ever going to acknowledge 
that ignoring people's arguments, challenging them to debate, calling basic science dumb, wait, 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 gooby, goober, whatever it is. I like science. I've never said science is dumb. I've said evolution is dumb. Evolution isn't part of science. How can you not get that? Show me the spot where I said science is dumb. Show me that. You can't do it. You're either confused or you're deliberately lying. Okay, I'm challenging you. Show me where I said science is dumb. I've never said that. I love science. Let's see. I said, be honest with them, buddy. I'm honest. I would agree about the efficiency reasoning if he didn't do it for every comment. He chooses the comments he wants to respond to. Joseph, how many comments do we get? Thousands and thousands. I'm doing the best I can do, okay? Let's see. He literally chooses the comments. Instead, he chooses to throw insults and repeat the lies. Now, come on, Goober. You're saying I'm repeating a lie. Show me where I lied. Come on, show me. You can't do it. I tell you what, why don't you comment and call in for a debate? You make a list of the lies and the places where I called basic science dumb, and we'll debate it here on our channel, your channel, anywhere, okay? Without engaging in scientific discourse. That's all I do. 334 debates, I think I engage in scientific discourse. Science, let me see, let me read it for you here. Science means knowledge. Look it up. That's the definition of the word. Knowledge gained by observation, experimentation, and testing. Seer means Latin word to know. What do we know? Well, we know cows produce cows. We know that. We can see it. We can observe it. We can test it. We do not know cows came from an amoeba. That's not science. Evolution is not science. How can you not get it? Let's see. Andrew writes, uh, I do not think he's throwing insults. He's informing them of Psalm 14, which means the fool said in his heart, there's no God. And you're a fool if you don't believe in God. Absolute fool. As far as not willing to engage in scientific discourse, I would point to the many debates he has held and still willing to do. Bingo. Call. 855-BIG-DINO, extension 4, schedule a debate. Anytime. People are welcome to disagree, but I hold his standing much higher than the public school or university. He has yet to ask for government funds to fund his views. Ah, you guys got to have government funding to fund your religion, don't you? Why don't you try evolution with no government funding, no, no public school support? Just try teaching it in uh, your private schools. You said, uh, Goober, He's literally calling a whole field of scientific discovery stupid. No, I'm not. There is no scientific discovery about evolution. Nobody's discovered any animal producing a different kind of animal, Goober. Nobody. You believe what you want, but it's not science. It's not an homage to Scripture. It's an insult. Come on now. No, it's the truth. There's no science for evolution. Hovind's debate tactic is to profoundly avoid scientific discourse through gish galloping. Shifting the goalpost, hurtling insults every time he's backed in a corner. I'll tell you what, Goober, back me in a corner. Come on. You get 20 of your top friends who believe in your same religion. I'll take you all on same time. You go first. Give the best evidence one topic at a time. You go first. I get equal time. No interrupting. Fair enough? You are get, galloping away from the debate. Watch. I'd bet five bucks, Billy, he will not call for a debate. Let's see. If he were good at debating these topics, he would be able to easily engage with comments in a simple written debate. He doesn't because he can't. I have produced 67 books in my lifetime. Okay. I have written a book. Are you being brainwashed by your science book? Tell you what, why don't you tell me where this is wrong? Why don't you get some of my books I wrote for public schools? Help, I'm being taught evolution in my biology class. Help, I'm being taught evolution in my earth science class. Come on. Refute them. I'll enga you guys won't engage in a debate at all. Okay. You're being brainwashed. You got the other ones? Look at that, brother. You're fast. Okay. Okay. As someone doing government-funded research, oh, hey, 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 look at this now. Goober does government-funded research. That's why he's, he's standing up for evolution. You have to. Or, you, know, you can't think outside that box. Be brave, Goober. Come out of the stupid box and look around. There's a designer. Go ahead. Come on out. Evolution's not a fact. It's all clear. Come out of that stupid box and look around at God's amazing creation. He made you and loves you and is willing to forgive and save you. Oh. End of tonight. Give me some comments here, brethren. Let's quit. 740. 
crybaby. We're going to get him saved, and he's going to become an evangelist. You watch. He's going to take over doing a ministry like mine. Yeah, that'll be great. What did he say? You're welcome. Glad you like it. I did like it. Very good. Peer review is not limited to a single country, political party, or ideology. Scientific publishing is open to anyone in the world, provided they have evidence and a supported hypothesis. Okay. I have published all kinds of books on teaching creation, so it's got to be true. I had several peers of mine review it, and they said, yeah, you're right, Kent. So this is peer reviewed. There you go. Or does it have to be an evolution-believing person who peer reviews it? See, in Nazi Germany, you had to get peer reviewed before it was published by another Nazi. Under, under, I tell you what, go to North Korea and publish an article against communism. It'll have to be peer reviewed by other communists, won't it? Won't get published, will it? Evolution is the same way in our country. I'm sorry, it just is. Okay, peer reviewed. All right, what else we got there, brother? Uh, darn. Uh, I genuinely want to know what are you most grateful for and why? Well, I guess for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanse my sins. Otherwise, I'd be in trouble. If I got what I deserved, I'd be in trouble. So I'm very grateful that God forgave me and died on that cross, and I'm going to heaven. I could give a long list of second, third, fourth, fifth. In your opinion, who is Jesus talking about in Matthew 7, 21? Well, I'd have to look it up. My Bible definitely falling apart. It's a dilapidated edition. Matthew. Everybody know that verse by heart, by memory. Matthew 7, uh, 21. Let's see. 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. A lot of people are claiming to be Christian and are not. They've never been born again. So you'd have to be the judge of that yourself if you accepted him or not. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, hello to the family chairs from Greece. Let's see, what Greek do I know? Enna, dia, tria, tessera, penda, hepta, exa. Did I get it right? That's about all the Greek I know. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Oven, for leading me to the Lord back in 2016. Well, amen. Now go lead somebody else to the Lord. Spread it around. Okay, let's see. Joe Friday. Joseph, did you plant the track hoe in the lake? Uh, paint. Oh, we're going to paint it up. Oh, it's half buried. He wants to paint it. Why? Why? I, nobody painted it. It's fine. Now, when I give my tour, I never mention Rex's name, but one of our guys drove it too close to the mud. Didn't they, Rex? <laughs> we need another backhoe. We rented one for a while. We'll be done uh, Monday. So if you want to buy us a backhoe, we need one. And we need a front-end loader. Bad. They're about $15,000, $20,000. Is that it, brother? Okay, uh, no, tomorrow, yep. We need a wife for Turbo, our tortoise. He's this big. Um, African spurred tortoise, a female. He's never seen one, but we think he'll figure out what to do. Okay, they're about a thousand bucks, right? Yeah. And they can't find him. A female, big, African spurred tortoise for Turbo. What, what one of our, did you see we have another calf born today? We got two up there now. Yeah, praise God. And they know within minutes where to find the dinner table. Who taught them that? And study uh, golden slippers. Animals that have hooves before they're born, they would kill the mother if they start kicking. But they got cartilage pads growing under their hoof called golden slipper fairy fingers. They wear off within hours of being born. Most people never heard of them. Did the mother evolve that on the calf for her safety? How did she evolve it on the calf? Did the calf know it needed to evolve them because it might kill mama? No, for millions of years, they all killed their mother and none of them lived. They all died. Now, you guys who believe this evolution stuff are insane, but I'm here to help. I really am. Okay, that's it. See you.